but the attorney general of the state of California and the legislative analyst office in the state of California play important roles in the initiative process. These roles are established by the state constitution as well as the California elections code. And so here I wanna give you an overview of the relevant laws that specify the respective roles of the AG and LAO in the state initiative process. Let's start with the attorney general. In California's constitution found in article two, we have the three forms of direct democracy, including the initiative. And in section 10 of article two, it describes the role of the attorney general in subsection D, which says, before circulation of an initiative or referendum petition for signatures, a copy shall be submitted to the attorney general who shall prepare a title and summary of the measure as provided by law. Now, there are also numerous provisions of California's elections code setting forth the AG's role. For example, section 9001 requires the text of the proposed measure to be submitted to the attorney general with a written request that a circulating title and summary of the chief purpose and points of the measure be prepared by the AG's office. The electors presenting this request are known as the proponents of the measure, and the AG has to preserve the written request until after the next general election. Section 9001 also provides that the proponents of a proposed initiative member uh, measure at the time that they submit the text of that proposed measure to the attorney general, they're required to pay a fee to the AG of $2,000 that's placed in a trust fund in the office of the treasurer, and it's actually refunded to the proponents if the measure qualifies for the ballot within two years from the date that the summary is furnished to the proponents by the AG. If the measure doesn't qualify, then the fee is immediately paid into the state's general fund. Section 9002 of the Elections Code specifies that Upon receipt of a request from the proponents of a proposed initiative mem uh, measure, the AG has to initiate a public review process for a period of 30 days. And the AG does so by posting the text on the AG's website and inviting and providing for written public comments to that proposed initiative measure. Also pursuant to section 9002 during this public review period, the proponents of that proposed initiative measure may actually submit amendments to the measure, so long as those amendments are reasonably germane to the theme, purpose, or subject of that initiative measure as it was originally proposed and provided or submitted to the AG. However, the amendments cannot be submitted if the initiative measure as originally proposed would not affect a substantive change in the law. You have to go and submit a brand new one. Section 9003 assigns the roles of the AG uh, to the Legislative Council if the AG is a proponent of a proposed measure. 9004 of the Elections Code specifies that after the public review period, the AG has to prepare the circulating title and summary of the chief purposes and points of the proposed initiative measure. And that summary, that title and summary cannot exceed 100 words. The Attorney General is also responsible for providing a, uni uh, a unique numeric identifier for each proposed initiative measure. And the circulating title and summary is required to be prepared in the manner that's provided for the preparation of battle. Uh, ballot titles and summaries elsewhere in the elections code. In addition, pursuant to section 9004, the AG provides a copy of the title and summary, as well as the identifier to the proponents and the Secretary of State after the AG receives the fiscal estimate of the initiative measure. Section 9005 sets forth details about the contents of the title and summary such as either the estimate of the amount of any increase or decrease in revenues or cost to the state or to a local government, or an opinion as to whether or not a substantial net change in state or local finances would result if this proposed initiative is adopted, 
And by the way, that fiscal estimate is made jointly by the Department of Finance and the legislative analyst. The estimate uh, is then delivered to the Attorney General within 50 days of the date of receipt of the proposed initiative measure by the AG, unless it's the opinion of the DOF and the LAO that a reasonable estimate of the net impact cannot be prepared within that 50-day period of time. Elections Code Section 9006 specifies that the Attorney General is required to prepare a circulating title and summary, and it, again, cannot exceed 100 words, and the fiscal analysis is not included in that 100-word estimate. And then 9006 uh, repeats some of the language about the AG sending the title and summary to the proponents and the Secretary of State, and that the Secretary of State notifies the proponents and county elections officials of each county of that official summary date and provides a copy of the circulating title and summary to each of the 58 county elections officials. Under Section 9007, the AG also has to provide that title and summary to the Assembly and Senate, and thereafter the appropriate committees of each House may hold public hearings on the subject matter of an initiative measure but nothing is to be construed as authority for the legislature to alter that measure or in any way to prevent it from appearing on the statewide ballot. Section 9008 of the Elections Code requires every proposed initiative prior to it being circulated for signatures to have placed across the top of the petition in 12 point or larger Roman boldface type the AG's unique numeric identifier, the title and summary, which has to be on every page of the petition, and it has to precede the text of the proposed ballot measure. In Elections Code Section 9050, after the Secretary of State determines that a measure will appear on the ballot at the next statewide election, then the Secretary of State has to promptly transmit a copy of the measure to the Attorney General and then the Attorney General provides and returns to the Secretary of State a ballot title and summary, as well as a ballot label for each measure submitted to the voters of the state. The courts have examined the role of the Attorney General in the initiative process, and the AG uh, has to ensure that they've complied with the mandates. A true and impartial statement of the purpose of the measure the mandate to the AG in preparing the official summary of a voter initiative is to state the purpose and effect of the measure and not to reiterate selective fragments of public commentary or debate on that measure. The courts of the state have also ruled on the main purpose of the pre-election initiative battle title and summary requirements, and they are used to avoid misleading the public with any sort of inaccurate information. In ruling on a challenge to the sufficiency of the ballot initiative title and summary, the courts are not vested with a wide range of discretion. So relief, uh, relief may be granted only upon clear and convincing evidence that the challenge ballot materials in question are either false or misleading or somehow inconsistent with the requirements of the elections code. A difference of opinion does not rise to the level of clear and convincing proof that the challenge language in the title and summary is somehow misleading. And these are all from decisions of the California appellate courts. So let's now turn to the role of the legislative analyst in the initiative process. Section 9005 requires the AG to include in the title and summary for a proposed initiative, either the estimate of the amount of any increase or decrease in revenue or cost to state or local government. Again, the estimate is made jointly by the Department of Finance and the legislative analyst. And again, they have roughly 50 days from the date of receipt of the proposed initiative by the AG uh, to get that over to the Attorney General. Pursuant to Section 9051 of the Elections Code, the ballot title and summary is required to include a summary of the legislative analyst estimate. 
of the net state and local government fiscal impact. In addition, Section 9085 requires the State Voter Information Guide to contain a section which is located near the front of that guide to provide a concise summary of the general meaning and effect of yes and no votes on each state initiative measure. The summary statements required under this section are prepared and must be prepared by the legislative analyst. And the analyst is solely responsible for determining the contents of these statements and they're to be made available for public examination and possible amendment. Section 9087 requires the legislative analyst to prepare an impartial analysis of a proposed initiative measure that describes the measure and includes a fiscal analysis of the measure that shows the amount of any increase or decrease in revenue or the cost to the state or local government. If it's estimated that a measure would result in increased cost to the state, an analysis of the measure's estimated impact must be provided and include an estimate of the percentage of the general fund that would be expended on the particular measure. Also, an estimate of increased cost to state or local governments must be set forth in boldface print in the State Voter Information Guide. Then section 9087, it also provides to the extent practicable that the legislative analyst is required to use a uniform method in each of its analyses to describe the estimated increase or decrease in revenue or cost associated because of a measure so that the average voter can draw comparisons among the fiscal impacts of all the measures on a particular ballot. The condensed statement of the fiscal impact summary for a measure prepared by the attorney general that appears on the ballot has to contain the uniform estimate of increase or decrease in revenue or the cost of the measure that was pre, uh, prepared uh, pursuant to this section by the legislative analyst. In addition, the legislative analyst is authorized under the elections code to contract with a professional writer or an educational specialist or any other person who can assist the legislative analyst in writing an analysis that fulfills the statutory requirements found in this section. That includes the requirement that the analysis be written so that it'll be easily understood by the average voter. The legislative analyst can also request the assistance of any state department agency or official when the LAO prepares the analysis. Finally, under section 9087, before submitting the fiscal analysis to the Secretary of State, the legislative analyst is required to submit the analysis to a committee of five persons who are appointed by the legislative analyst and their purpose is to review the analysis to confirm its clarity and easy comprehension. The legislative analyst is required to consider the committee's recommendations and incorporate in the analysis those changes that are recommended uh, by the committee that the legislative analyst deems to be appropriate. Keep in mind though that the legislative analyst is solely responsible for determining the content of the analysis that's required here. Section 9088 is the last one. And it says that at each statewide election in which bond measures are submitted to the voters for their approval or rejection, the state voter information guide for that particular election has to include a discussion that is prepared by the legislative analyst that discusses the state's current bonded indebtedness situation. As you would expect, there are also a handful of court cases regarding the role of the legislative analyst in the initiative process. For example, in People versus Cordova, a 2016 appellate court decision, the appellate court determined that the preparer of a ballot pamphlet that summarized the meaning and effect of a ballot measure necessarily exercises discretion that requires the courts to allow a considerable amount of latitude when the result of that summary is challenged as being incomplete or inaccurate. And the legislative analyst, the court said, in preparing that ballot pamphlet, the legislative analyst is called upon only to make a rational, a rational judgment 
about what effects are most likely to matter to the voters and to describe those uh, effects in a fair and intelligible way. So again, this is a discussion of the roles that the attorney general and legislative analysts play in the California initiative process.